Hey guys, these notes are for transformations in vertex form. This is the second section of these notes. The first part was over vertex form. Um, we're going to be talking about the transformations um, and what these parts tell us. So I'm going to kind of split this into four sections so that I don't overwrite in certain areas. Okay. So the first one, we're going to talk about the A value. So if A is positive, then it opens, do you remember? It's going to open up. Remember, we have that little like smiley face where it opens up because it's positive, it's happy. If A is negative, then it opens down which is like a sad face. Okay, so we have two parabolas there. One's negative, one's positive. Now, let me draw a picture on the side here, and you don't really have to draw this. I'm gonna kind of just talk about it. If I have a parabola, let's say this green one here, and right now it is positive, it is face up. And when we're talking about transformations, we're talking about their relationship between, from the parent function to the new uh, uh, function. So if this is our original function, and I make it open down so it, it flips the other way, is this a reflection over the x-axis or over the y-axis? This would be a reflection over the x-axis, right? We're taking that green one, it's hard to show you without my hands, but we're flipping it basically over the x-axis to the other side of the x-axis. So if you see a negative sign, this is telling us what color should I use, okay. This is telling us that it is a reflection over the x-axis. And if there's no negative sign, then obviously there's no reflection. It's just, um, there is no reflection, it just stays positive, okay? The other part about this, um, about, about our transformations that's new, so we already learned about reflections before. Um, and I'm sorry for the background noise. People are still in the school. You okay? Oh, I'm great, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> um, so this section is brand new. So let's talk about this. If, now these are absolute value bars. So these are like little lines or bars. And I'll talk about them in a second. So if A is greater than 1, then we have a vertical stretch. Okay. And I'll kind of talk about that a little bit more. So I'm going to leave some space between that. If A in my absolute value bars is less than 1, then we have a vertical Compression. Okay. Now let's talk about what that means. So first let's talk about absolute value bars. So anything in an absolute value bar will become positive. So if I have negative 2 on the inside of absolute value bars, that's just going to equal 2. If I have a positive 2 in absolute value bars, I'll still have 2. So whatever goes inside those bars becomes positive. So basically it's saying whatever A is, doesn't matter. If it's bigger than 1, then it's going to have a vertical stretch. Or if it's less than one, it'll have a vertical compression. So let's talk about what it means to have a stretch and a compression. So let me draw this picture of my parabola. Okay, well, that's an ugly parabola. Now, looking at this picture, which one of these is your vertical axis? Is it your y-axis or is it your x-axis? Okay, it's going to be my x, my, uh, my y-axis, this blue one right here. So this is the axis that I'm looking at. If I have a vertical stretch, so this blue part, if I have a vertical stretch, that means I'm stretching or I'm pulling my y-axis and I'm pulling it apart. So just pretend like you have one hand on the bottom, one hand on top, and you pull it apart. What would happen to your pink parabola? Would it get narrower? Would it go in closer? Or would it get fatter? Would it get wider? Okay. Um, if you're having trouble like visualizing this, you can definitely come and ask me. But what's happening is that your parabola is getting narrower. Of course, on a star test, it's not going to say narrower. It'll probably say vertical stretch. Okay, so basically you're stretching your axis, and it's stretching it, and it's making it narrow. Now, for vertical compression, we're still looking at the y-axis, but what happens when I take my y-axis and I compress it? It means I squish it. What would happen if I take both ends and I squish it down? Then my parabola ends up getting wider, so it's getting, getting squished. So this would make it wider, okay? So when you're asked to list transformations, you either put a narrower or wider. All right, next here we have um, 
our little house, all right? We have a house and our x is inside. Do we remember this sort of from uh, linear functions? Um, so we have our house here and our x is in the house. And basically we wanna run away from our x and we can only run away either left or right. So this is a horizontal shift. which means we can either go left or we can go right. Okay, and don't forget that these are gonna be opposite of what you think it's going to be. Okay, so if there's a x plus three on the inside, then you're gonna to go to the left. So let's do an example, we have x plus three, that would be the left. If we have like x minus five, that would be the right five. Okay, so those are just some examples. All right, and the last thing, the only transformation or the only translation we haven't talked about is, what color have I not used? I haven't used orange, is going up or down. So this would be our vertical shift. This would be up or down. Okay, and that's whatever you think it would be. If it's plus five, then it's up five. If it's minus seven, then it's down seven. All right, moving on, we need to graph and identify transformations from the parent function. So our parent function here is going to be y equals x squared, and it's always the parent function. That's the most basic quadratic function. Now we need to list the transformations from that one to this new one. So let's look at all the different transformations we see. Well, I see a plus one inside my parentheses. So that's gonna to indicate to me either left or right. And since it's plus one and I need to do the opposite, I know that's going to be left one, okay? Also, I see a plus two on the outside. And since it's on the outside, I know that's gonna give me up or down. And since it's positive, it would be up two. Now that's the only thing different. Everything else is gonna be the same as what you did on um, the previous notes, which is a graphing standard form. So you're just gonna graph it. So you're gonna type this in your calculator. Okay, once you type that in your calculator, you'll type it in y equals, and you can create a little table over here. Now, without even looking at your calculator, you should already know what your vertex is because this is a vertex form, okay? There's only two forms, either the standard or vertex. Since this is already vertex, let me ask you, what is the vertex? Remember, it's h comma k, your vertex, okay? So your vertex here would be negative one, positive two. Now, remember, your vertex is what goes in the middle of your table, okay? It's the one that doesn't have a twin, the y values of twins, so that one will go in the middle. So without even graphing, without even doing anything, you should already know what your vertex is just by the form that you're given, okay? Um, so actually, I can just put negative one, two here. And then you're gonna write the two points above it and below it, so you should have um, negative two, three, negative four, six, uh, zero, three, and one six. I believe that is correct, but I'm not. I'm like not a hundred percent on that. Let me get my calculator out. X plus one squared plus two. So I could graph. Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so I'm gonna graph all of those. I have my vertex is negative one two. Now, also without even looking, I should know that it's going to open up because my A is positive. So I'm gonna continue graphing, but I should know all those things without even having to graph. Those are all your little like checkpoints for yourself to make sure you're graphing correctly. So your graph should look something like this. I mean, hopefully a little prettier. Mine looks kind of janky. All right, now your x axis of symmetry is always x equals and remember, it goes through the vertex, so it'll have the same x value as your vertex, which is negative 1. Okay? I don't know why I did that in a different color. Let me go ahead and do that in blue. x equals negative 1. So remember, um, these guys will be the same. Okay? Now, your y-intercept. Now, for standard form, your equation gave you the y-intercept. It was your c value. But for a vertex form, we don't have the c value. So you will have to refer back to your calculator on your table. Okay? So on table in your calc, and you're looking for zero comma number, okay? So you look through your table, you should get zero comma three if you look at your uh, graphing table. And then, I don't know why I changed colors again. Okay, and then domain for quadratics is still all real numbers, so that doesn't change. 
and then your range. So you know this is opening up, so it's going to be y is greater than or equal to, and then it's whatever your y value for your vertex is because that's your lowest or highest point. So it's always going to be that y value. So let me go ahead and highlight that so you remember. So those are always going to be the same. That's graphing that one. Okay, number two, go ahead and graph. Let's look at the transformations for this one. This one, we actually have three transformations. The first one, okay, well, I notice that I have this negative in the front. Now, negatives always indicate to me that I have a reflection. It literally doesn't do anything else but tell me that I have a reflection. So this is a reflection over the x-axis, okay? Now, since it's negative in the front, that means our a is negative. And when a is negative, that means we'll have a parabola that faces down. The other transformation that we have is that we're going to the right to, because that's in the house, and it's the opposite of what you would think it is normally. And this one would be up three. And those are our three transformations, okay? And then like normal, you're going to go ahead and go to your calculator. And you want to be really careful. This is a minus sign. Oh, not just kidding. This is a negative sign. And this one is a minus sign. Okay, so you don't want to screw that up. So if it's the very first minus sign, then it's going to be a negative one. Whoops. X minus 2 squared plus 3. Second graph. Okay. Again, without even looking or without even looking at my graph I should know that from my vertex form here that what my vertex is okay remember it's h comma k so that it would be positive 2 positive 3 so I shouldn't even have to look at my table on my calculator but I'll check and I do have positive 2 positive 3 and then the other numbers that I have are 1 2 0 negative 1 3 2 4 negative 1 Okay, so let's graph that, 2, 3. Again, it should face down since A was negative. Okay, so our vertex here is going to be 2, 3. Axis of symmetry is going to be the x values, x equals 2. Our y-intercept, again, that's going to be on your table. That's going to be 0, comma number. In this case, it's 0, comma negative 1. Domain is always all real numbers, and our range, since it is face down, it'll be y is less than or equal to, and it's always our y value of the vertex, which is 3. Sorry, there's still people in the hallway, so you might be hearing some stuff. Alright, so we need to graph this last one. If you think you got it, you can go ahead and try this one on your own, um, or you can just stick around too. 3 squared. Now, before I graph anything, I do have a star next to this, and it's not for the transformations part, it's for the graphing part. So, transformations, I know, whoops, I know that there's a one half in the front here. That one half indicates to me that I'm either going to have a wideness change or a narrowness change. Now, since this number, okay, it is less than one, okay, it's going to be wider, and I'm going to show you why. So, let's, whoops, okay. Now, that first one, this red one, is my parent function. Red is the parent function here. And I want to ask you, do you think that the g of x one will be wider or narrower? Okay. Now, g of x, we have 1 over 100. Now, 1 over 100 is really small. It's actually smaller than, it's way smaller than 1. I could have 1 fifth, or let's see, 1 ninth. Okay, let's try 1 ninth. Do you think this would be wider or narrower? Okay it became wider because it is less than one, right? Let's do one over 100, it's super wide. One over 50, okay, it's still wide. So anything that's less than one is gonna give me a wider graph, one half, one third, okay? Now let's talk about something that's way bigger than one. Let's say I have 100, what would happen? It would be super narrow, okay? So 10 makes it narrow, six would make it narrower, 900 would make it super, super narrow. So the bigger the number, the bigger it is than 1, the more narrow it will get. So since 1 half is smaller than 1, it will become wider, okay? And the plus 3 on the inside will get, make us go to the left, 3. And those are our only two transformations. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and graph this so at my x and y table here. My vertex goes in the middle. In this case, 
my h would be negative 3, and my k, since there isn't anything out here, would technically be 0. So we have negative 3, 0, and I can actually graph that to check. I do get that from my vertex. Um, now, depending on how you entered this in your calculator, you may have decimals or you may have fractions. My calculator shows decimals because it's like super old, so. Okay, and then you just copy down the two numbers outside of it. Remember, vertex always goes in the middle. Um, if your calculator is showing fractions, you'll just have to convert to decimals in order to graph, unless you can know like fractions at the top of your head. Like if you know nine over two is 4.5, you know, good for you. You can, you can already do it in your head. All right, so we have negative three, zero. You have negative four, and then up 0. 0.5. Negative five, up two. You have negative two, up 0. 0.5, and negative one, two. Okay, so this one did get wider. Okay. And it is, it's supposed to be face up because A is positive in this case. Our vertex here is negative three, zero. Remember, it's vertex form, so we didn't even have to graph to get that. Axis of symmetry is always the x value of your vertex. x equals negative 3. Make sure you always put x equals. Remember, it's a line, so it needs to be an equation of a line. All right, your y-intercept you will have to find on your you will have to find on your table, which is going to be 0, 4.5. Thanks. All right, and then this is on the table don't forget so you might not see this on your actual table that you wrote down on your paper but it is on your calculator so make sure you check the calc on calc okay your domain is always all real numbers in your range okay it's face up so it's going to be y is greater than or equal to and it's whatever your y value is which is zero so I'll go ahead and highlight those so that we know where those came from all right, and then last thing we need to do, we're given an equation here, y equals 3x minus 1 squared minus 5. We need to create a new equation that has been reflected over the x-axis, vertically stretched, shifted left three units, and down two units. So we're asked to do four different things here. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy this down. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect it over the x-axis. In order for a reflection to happen, what must I have? Okay, I must have a negative sign. So I'm going to go ahead and include that negative sign here. Okay. Now, I'm going to cross that out. I did that. Whoops. Okay, I'm actually not going to cross it out. Or maybe I will. No, I won't. All right, so I'm also going to vertically stretch it. So to vertically stretch it, does that make it more narrow or more wide? Let's think about that. Vertical stretch... It's going to make it narrower. So I need something that's an even narrower than 3, okay? Because 3 is already bigger than 1, because that's what we have right now. Our A is 3. We need something bigger than 3. So you could pick 4. You could pick 5. I'm going to pick 14. Why not? Anything bigger than 3, because we want it narrower. All right, and then we want to, to stretch, uh, not stretch, uh, shift 3 units to the left. Now, if I'm going to the left 3, would that be plus 3 or minus 3? That would be plus 3. So you're going to add 3 to this. So negative 1 plus 3. Now, in your parentheses, everything's staying the same, except I need to add 3. So earlier, it was already minus 1. I needed to add 3 to that. Well, negative 1 plus 3 is going to be positive 2. Okay. And then the last thing I want, it wants me to do is go down 2 units. And so it was already down 5, and I need to go down 2 more, which means I need to go down 7. Okay. That would be my final answer. y equals negative 14, x plus 2 squared minus 7. Again, you could have a different a value. It just depends, as long as you're vertically stretching it. If you end up putting like 2 or 1, you're making it wider. You're compressing it and not stretching it. But that is it for our notes for um, transformations. If you have any questions, feel free.